in our Europe, the alternative Europe, national borders will be respected. But across those borders, across those borders, the hand of friendship will be offered to those who want to work with us in one overriding cause to keep the nations of Europe European. generations of Europeans, the genes and the blood that flowed in the veins of Homer, Alexander, Edward the First, Frederick the Great, Newton, Galileo, Nelson, Leonardo, Bach, and Shakespeare. That is what we must hand down to the future generations of Europe. And it's amazing to me that the politicians, they're always talking about Europe, they're always talking about Europe, the great European ideals that they're always saying they believe in, and yet these are the very people who have been busy over the past 40 years bringing the third world flooding into Europe to occupy our homeland. How can they talk, How can they talk of themselves as Europeans? So we must not be forced into the trap of declaring ourselves anti-Europe. We are anti the EU, anti the single currency, anti the idea of a super government. But we are the guardians of the finest traditions of European culture, European civilization, and above all, the indigenous races that have made Europe the greatest continent in the world. Of course, as you know, the battleground is Europe. And here, someone has provided us with an excellent slogan. Our Europe, not theirs. That is an excellent slogan. We fight against the European super government. We fight against the single currency. But we don't fight against the patriots of France, the patriots of Germany, of Spain, Italy, and the other European nations who are just as entitled to their freedom and their sovereignty as we are to ours. Who are just as entitled to defend their homelands and their national identities as we are to defend ours. What on earth is the point of fighting for this country's freedom and sovereignty? If at the end of it all, the British nation is lost anyway from immigration multiracialism and interbreeding. All around the world there are hodgepodges of populations who have a kind of common self government But that's about all they do have in terms of possessing people able to survive in the world without regular huge dollops of courtesy, of aid, courtesy of our own taxpayers. They have no nationhood at all worth talking about. They're only nations they are only nations in the sense of possessing a little piece of paper saying that they have their own sovereign government that they can't claim to be nations in any other sense because any other any nationhood they ever have or ever had has been eliminated by racial mixture over the centuries so the whole idea of political sovereignty of free self-government is absolutely meaningless Unless you defend the race, the people, the stock, the breed that is the foundation of that nationhood in the first place. One is no good without the other. Some people talk as if all we have to do is to go back to the way we were, to where we were before 1973 when we signed the Treaty of Rome. In other words, to go back the old laid-back, easy-going, soft-touch, inefficient, multiracial Britain that existed before we signed the Treaty of Rome and joined the then common market in 1973. This isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. Coming out of the EU has got to be the start. Then we've got to rebuild from the very roots the country which the old politicians have destroyed. And we have to fight 
not only the EU bureaucracy, but the whole of the empire of international finance that has enslaved us all. One is no good without the other. But there's something else that we have to fight. We have to fight an attitude of national dignity. And this is one of the most pernicious developments of the past two or three decades.